delegation leaders, members of parliament at the 144th IPUM assembly in Indonesia. I express heartfelt thanks to the IPU for providing this virtual opportunity to share climate change experiences and the dire situation in Myanmar. Our delegation wishes to join in passing, but it is impossible. As the chair of CRPH, the committee representing Kidao Zulutu, formed by our assembly presence of elected MPs, I assure delegates that we perform our legislative oversight and representative duties, and that includes oversight of climate agreements, albeit in extremists. We strongly committed to climate change policy action, recognizing the wide ranging damaging impact on the environment, economy, and livelihoods. The Union Parliament approved the ratifications of the 2017 Paris Agreement and Myanmar nationally determined contributions that are now in limbo. The military agenda does not adhere to the multilateral environmental agreements, climate change commitments, and human rights declarations. The development of COVID-19 and coup has jeopardized a decade of development of progress in all sectors, including environment. While the world is moving towards a resilient net zero economy, Myanmar is deteriorating. The gender has allowed illegal traders and good cronies to exploit natural resources, which elevate climate risks and imperial sustainability. The NUG, Ministry of Natural Resources and Environmental Conservation Assessment Report, status of natural resources depletions during the military region in Myanmar demonstrates that natural resources depletion has occurred on a large scale without check throughout the military rule. CRPH, NUG, and Myanmar people include nature-based solution with a people-centered approach to tackle climate change. We have established interim constitutional arrangements and have been preparing trans transitional constitutional arrangements to ensure Myanmar transitions to the governized economy. Climate action is not just a political issue, but also justice issue. Justice and peace are condition precedents to affect climate change commitments. And it cannot happen under the repressive pressure of military gender. Massive displacement of people living in rural and ethnic areas due to the violence perpetrated by military gender has slowed climate actions. More than 13 million people are now in moderate or severe food insecurity as a result and people are increasingly resorting to dangerous coping strategies to survive with security risk concerns. While we are supporting the vulnerable groups and then a displaced person. And the national humanitarian and development assistance is urgently needed as a political support to end the coup. CRPH would like to advocate that international climate financing and humanitarian aids should be distributed through NUG and related stakeholders, ensuring all inclusiveness. The world is threatened by climate change and dictators at the same time. We really need to stand together to fight against them, showing our strong commitment of that. I believe the outcomes of assembly will reflect this. Thank you.